Hey guys, so this video is going to be a little bit different than the usual ones. I am going to be making a wig that most of you are a little bit more familiar with. guys, Kamra here with Elon Blue Talks, where I help you to create stunning wigs through easy to follow steps, explore simple protective hairstyle options, and share tips on growing healthy, beautiful hair naturally. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to my channel down below to catch more videos just like this. All links in this video is going to be in the description box below. So in this video, I am going to be demonstrating a 4x4 frontal sewing lace wig. So as we get started, the first thing I want to apologize for is the start of this video. Unfortunately, as I was recording, somehow I lost the footage of me starting off this unit. So I do apologize for starting with the uh, 4x4 already attached to the cap, but uh, I figured I might as well still do the video. So here we are let's go ahead and talk about some of the tools we're going to need to get started so to make this unit i am using a 4x4 lace closure the brand of hair i'm using is organica and it comes in four pieces a uh, four piece bundle including the 4x4 closure i am also using a 23 inch mannequin head an adjustable wig cap by dream world weaving needle, a weaving thread, tea pens, mannequin stand of course, hair clips if you have some, a hair tie uh, to pull up all of that hair out of your way. And just be mindful that all of the tools I'm using will be listed in the description below. So if you would like a clear description or a link to some of the tools I'm using, just check it out below. And now let's just go ahead and get started. So of course, as I mentioned before, the 4x4 is already placed on the cap. So now all I'm gonna do is attach the 4x4 to the cap with a hand stitch technique. The hair I'm using is really cool because it's probably the best synthetic hair I've come across, especially in regards to like straight synthetic hair. I haven't found any that's in a more kinky curly texture yet, but I'm sure they are probably developing it because I think this for the most part, the way they make this synthetic hair is quite new. And so there is a lot of growth and a lot of potential with this brand. So I'm really excited, but um, as of right now, I really, really, really do like this brand. Um, on the package, it says that it is using a blend master uh, technique and with some new like technology of like blending synthetic hair and 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 um, having it like mimic human hair which is which is quite good one thing i do enjoy about um using this brand is that <laughs> for one i don't have to like make my width because for a while, I was making my own width because it was kind of hard to find uh, with synthetic hair, especially the, with the kind of quality I was looking for. So I'm quite excited to finally find a brand that I don't have to do so much work with. And all I have to do is literally cut the width and sew it onto a cap. And to find that it also has a four by four closure, it's just, absolutely amazing and even the hairline on the closure is it's not bad you may do need to do a little bit of plucking 
because it is a little bit sharp, but uh, it's not bad considering uh, the price. The whole process of sewing on this 4x4 closure probably took me about 30 minutes. This is still new to me, so I am probably a little slower. I'm sure it could go a little faster. I will definitely share the YouTube channel I got my technique from so that you can get a better, a better visual of like how a really good sewing process goes and just how a really, really dope wig turns out. Now the, the channel I got it from, they were using human hair, so I just put my little twists on it with my synthetic hair, and yeah, so you can do this same process with human or synthetic hair, and I just wanted to show that. But uh, I will share that YouTuber in the description below, because I am still totally new to this process, and you guys deserve the best.
So this is the last little bit of the piece and I'm just twisting the thread around the needle to create a loop and then a knot. It's a fairly easy process but I will do it again because I am a little frustrated that I, was, I, I don't have the footage that shows the beginning process. So I do, do, do apologize about that, but that just means we get to make more videos. to part two which is creating the guideline onto the cap so that the whiffs can be sewn. Now guidelines are important as far as showing you where the track should go but you don't have to stick strictly to it. You can kind of veer off of it if you need to. They are just guidelines but uh, it, it really 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 is helpful to have them. Now I started off my guidelines being a half an inch apart, but once I saw how many tracks I was going to have to sew onto the cap in order to follow those guidelines, I, th I thought maybe that would be a little bit too much and a lot of work, so I decided to cut that in half and space it out to an inch apart, which means that because the widths are a little thin, I needed to double those with in order to like cover and give all the fullness that I was looking for. So you'll see me once we finish this guideline process, you'll see me sew this, the whiffs together to make it just a little bit thicker and, um, and just look a little bit better for the spacing that we have. But yes, that process, those small, those uh, half an inch apart guidelines would have been hell trying to like sew every whiff onto that so I am glad oh, I rethought that and <laughs> spaced it out a little bit more because that that is not the move As I'm doing the side, I like to start to angle the lines downward in the back because if you continue to go straight across, you may run out of space. And then as I go, as I move upward towards the closure, I start to taper it towards the closure a little bit more so that it's squaring it a little bit. And that is pretty much the process for the guidelines. So on to part three, which is the sewing process. For the most part, this whole wig making process is quite easy and quite fast once you've kind of gotten a technique going and the hang of things. So the first thing you're going to see me do once the machine is ready is remove the hair from the package and then stitch the whiffs together. So I'm going to fold them, fold 
two pieces together and stitch those because that's going to help to create a thickness that we are going to need in order to cover the cap. If I leave it as thin as it is, um, once I start to apply them onto the wig, it might still show the cap a little bit because it is so thin. So just adding the two with together will thicken it up enough to hide the cap. Now, most people I've noticed double the width for the whole entire wig and that makes the wig nice and full and thick, but I don't like to have it too full because to me, it just looks a little bit less real when it's that full. So having just a th nice thinner kind of natural looking wig is what I'm going for. So that is the aim. So I'm gonna double the width for some of the parts, the pieces in the heart. The, I'm gonna double the width for some parts of the hair, a little bit in the back, a little bit at the top, but maybe like the center, I may leave that as single widths just to kind of thin it out just a little bit. No one is gonna see the back anyways, and all the hair is gonna uh, fall over the center back from the top so I think it's going to be good.
guys thank you so so much for watching it was a pleasure doing this video for you if you have any questions please do leave a comment below and I will do my very very best to answer all of those questions if you like this video please do share with your friends and family stay tuned for more videos and until next time peace